So that was interesting. I'm currently wearing the Cloud Orbit S, the new headset from HyperX that are coming in with the clutch because the current gaming headset scene has become like a little bit stagnated as gaming keyboards are getting expensive, uh, gaming mice are getting lighter in weight. You know, what's the next cool thing with the gaming headset? And I feel like HyperX has got you covered. They're finally bringing a little bit of innovation into the sector. Uh, and this thing is a rebrand of the Odyssey Mobius headset. But this thing is slightly cheaper because it does not have the wireless functionality. This is a wired headset only, and it's got many cool things working for it. So let's check it out right after this. AOC's warranty just respawned. That covers four years general warranty for any defects, including a one-time accidental warranty replacement of Aegon monitors because sometimes things happen. So you can enjoy a super smooth and responsive gameplay just like the warranty. Check it out below. All right, so let me break this down for you. The reason why I think this headset is important, it's because of the brand. HyperX is known for their gaming audio. If you ever bought anything gaming in the audio sphere related, you most likely have come across HyperX Cloud Series one way or another. And the fact that they teamed up with Odyssey to release a planar magnetic gaming headset is awesome because how many people know about Odyssey? Probably not many in the mainstream gaming arena. Uh, but HyperX is widely popular and it's a really good way to kind of channel those planar magnetic drivers into the hands of the mainstream consumers, even though it's a very expensive pair. The Orbit is $299 and the Orbit S is $329. And the main distinction between the two, the $30 premium gets you the Waves NX technology, basically the 3D tracking that's built into the headset. And I'll talk about that later. So you do get that with the Orbit S, but you do not with the Orbit. While the Odyssey Mobius sells for $399, and the reason for that markup is because the Odyssey Mobius also has wireless functionality with Bluetooth, while this thing does not. And that price point, I get it, will immediately turn off many consumers from even considering or looking at something like it, uh, but the whole idea is that inclusion of 100 millimeter planar magnetic drivers into the gaming market, and let me tell you guys, these sound incredible. The deepest, richest bass on any gaming headset that I've ever heard. The best bass in my experience before these were the GSP 600 from Sennheiser. Nice richness, deepness of those uh, uh, lower end. But here, the planar magnetic driver is just so good at delivering those lower end frequencies that I would say it's like really, really nice for music. And in a gaming environment, it's awesome because it doesn't distort and doesn't overshadow any other frequency that you feel the bass, it's almost supposed to be rumbling the headset or the ear cups, but it doesn't. It's fully controlled and that is awesome. So the drivers need a lot of power, which is why you see on the box up to 10 hours of usage. And that only applies when you use them in analog mode via the 3.5 millimeter connection at the bottom. In my testing at full power, we dropped 20% in two and a half hours. So there are up to 10 hours of runtime is valid. Now for the price point, build quality is okay. There's no creaking when you're trying to flex them. Size extensions work well. The padding on top of the headband on the ear cups is memory foam. So they do conform to the shape of your head. Uh, the clamping force here is a bit strong in the beginning. It has loosened over time a little bit, but still there's a little bit too much clamping force at the bottom of the headset, uh, even though uh, you can slightly extend them and they would fit larger heads no problem. Just be mindful of the clamping force that, um, you know, they're not HD 5.8x comfortable, but they're pretty good for what they are. They're also pretty light at 368 grams, and my only complaint with the build is the surface texture and the coating. It is slightly rubberized and matte, which is pretty nice to, to the touch, but it reveals all scratch marks, reveals all handling marks in terms of the oil, and so over time, this thing is not going to look pretty. Now, the accessories are pretty basic with a carry pouch, a Type-A to Type-C cable, the Type-C to Type-C, our analog cable, and a removable microphone with a pop filter. As for the microphone, currently it's at maximum gain and it is noise canceling. So as I'm typing on MX Brown keyboard, it tries to cancel out and mute all the background stuff without too much compression. So there is still nice body to the sound. However, I feel like this is a condenser microphone, so I have to be really close to it for it to pick up enough volume and if I move it a little bit further back then it becomes almost inaudible which is unfortunate given this is maximum gain. Here's what the GSP 500 sounds like from Sennheiser. This is one of my favorite gaming headset microphones because it's really natural, great bass pickup. Uh, the only thing it's not noise cancelling so it does pick up more ambient room noise as you can hear I'm typing on the keyboard but 
as an overall package, I feel like this is slightly better than the Orbit and the Orbit S. But you let me know which sounds better to you in the comments. All of the controls are located on the left ear cup to make sure that your right hand stays on the mouse and that does not need to come off whenever you need to change any of the parameters. Here we have a mic mute. We have a power on and off switch that also acts as your play pause. At the bottom, we have two wheels, one for volume adjustment and one for the microphone volume. And if you hold and cycle the mic volume, you cycle between different EQ presets. And if you hold it for three seconds, you are actually changing the audio modes between 7.1 channel, uh, stereo channel, and high-res audio. Then we have our analog 3.5 millimeter input, our Type-C port, uh, microphone input, and that 3D button. And this 3D mode is only relevant for the Orbit S because that features the Waves and X technology while the Orbit does not. And when it is enabled, it basically creates this stereo speaker set in front of you that is centered. And if you rotate your head accordingly, that stereo separation remains locked to the center like this, but it changes them dynamically in the actual headset, which is pretty cool because you could look away from the source and this speaker will be louder than that one, and it gives you that whole realistic scenario of listening to speakers instead of audio being here, regardless of your head movement. At first, it was really cool to experience something like it because it locks off this audio source in front of you, or where you set the center channel, and so it does uh, shift based, based on like where you look, but in neither of the situations, movie watching, games, or music, has that benefited my listening experience. In gaming, for example, it makes no sense because if you move your head slightly, it does change the stereo positioning of the audio, which does not give you any benefit in trying to position audio keys and stuff. In movies, uh, it again, like if you were to look away to talk to somebody, you would still hear the slightly louder stereo separation, but why? And the only reason I would see this head tracking to be beneficial is maybe in VR, where an audio source can be locked off, so you could be looking back and still hearing something in a properly positioned 3D space around you, but when you're sitting physically at your desk, how does moving around give you any benefit? I don't get it. But outside of head tracking, 3D audio for game immersion is absolutely on point. It's one of the only few virtual surround sound modes that I enjoy outside of like the GSX-1000 from Sennheiser, where here the environment does get slightly wider. Without losing detail, you still get a lot of that nice bass definition, good clarity throughout the entire range. And I really appreciate the a bit closeness on the vocals. I actually really like watching YouTube videos with 3D audio on. Uh, and I was not expecting that. I almost never enable any virtual surround sound in gaming where audio cues are important, but I have with this thing in Escape from Tarkov, being able to detect footsteps above me, below me, on wood, glass, in the forest, whatever, and I didn't even realize that 3D audio was on where I could easily tell where some enemies were. Even in CSGO where the audio cues are so well-defined already in stereo channels, 3D mode and CSGO uh, did not suffer. Now, in terms of the software, it's a good visual indication on where and which direction the headset is kind of looking for, and you can center that easily so that you're looking at the screen and that is your center channel. In terms of the sound presets, all of it is done on the headset itself, which is quite nice, even when you're running this in analog mode and you can change between them via the mic switch whenever it works. I do prefer the default preset and worm preset to just warm up those bass tones, which are fantastic already. And here you can also see the battery percentage and the microphone volume. And so in the end, the sound quality from the planar magnetic drivers is absolutely incredible. For $300, that is expensive, but you get the best bass that I've ever heard in the gaming headset with beautiful clarity, nice expansion too, and really good handling of the DSPs in terms of when 3D audio is enabled and is the only 3D audio virtual surround sound that I enjoy outside of the GSX-1000. The microphone quality is a bit disappointing, and I'm not a huge fan of the rubberized soft coating that just gets covered in finger marks and oils and just scratches way too easily. For $300, it doesn't feel right. The takeaway here is that I hope more companies start to use planar magnetic drivers in their gaming headsets. I know that is going to increase the price point, but I mean, the gaming headsets are so expensive already that it doesn't hurt to venture out into more premium driver territory to get better sound. I know this thing is going to be not super popular among mainstream because of the price point, but for those looking for 
really good audio solutions that is like a gaming headset in disguise. The Orbit S or the Orbit would be my pick because Wave as an NX technology is kind of, it's just a gimmick that gives you head tracking, but real no use in any of the scenarios where I tested this thing. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next video.